Thank you. All right, good afternoon, evening. Thank you guys for coming and uh, <clears throat> spending your evening here to talk about the Army Jag Corps. Now, just because you put your name on that uh, pad does not commit you to anything whatsoever <laughs> with the U.S. military. So that is just like, apparently just your internal sign-in sheet. Now, if you want more information, um, I just have a little list here of emails. I can email you my contact info um, if you have any questions. Um, about applying, anything in the process, I can send you our website um, and give you more information. Uh, and then if you are interested in applying, I would just ask, I've got a sign up sheet here for interviews tomorrow. Uh, if you're applying for the 2L internship or the active duty or graduating your 3L, um, I would want to interview you tomorrow because I'm not going to be back down here for a while, uh, probably for the rest of this year. So you have to get that interview done before it's part of your application process. And the application deadline is 1 November. Okay? Um, so if you're applying for that, it's important to get the interview. So just a little bit of admin. Um, is there anyone here that's a 3L? Okay. A couple 3Ls. Uh, 2Ls? All right. And then 1Ls? Okay, great. You guys are high speed. All right. Getting ahead of the curve here. <clears throat> All right. So Captain Scott Baker, uh, you're stationed up in Fort Stewart, Georgia, which is by Savannah. You guys have been to Savannah, nice little town, Spanish moss, ghost tours, nice little place. Um, prior to this, I was stationed in Afghanistan, and then before that, I was stationed in Germany for three years. So, kind of a variety of assignments. I uh, spent most of my time in criminal law in the military, so the Army were pretty like criminal law focused. Soldiers get in trouble, unfortunately, all the time. Uh, and so, we do a lot of criminal law. Um, so I'll talk to you a little bit about the JAG Corps. Um, <clears throat> before I go into the presentation, like one of the main things that I see is like a benefit is they'll pay, if you go active duty, they pay up to $65,000 of your tuition back. Um, it takes about three years for them to pay it back because they don't pay it all in one lump sum, but so that's $65,000 off of your law school education. Um, so pretty good deal. Uh, and then uh, they can actually, build Currently, they have a bonus after that if you sign up for it. So that's a four-year commitment. So for four years, you're committed to the Army, active duty, and they'll pay $65,000 off your loans. Um, and then you can actually sign up again for another four years. Some people do. That's what I did. And they'll give you another $60,000, not for your loans, just for anything, uh, bonus, a retention bonus to keep you in. So pretty good benefits. Um, <clears throat> people ask about the pay. You can look at the pay chart. Just the pay itself, uh, probably lower than you see a lot of law firms, but I tried to calculate it out. Uh, you get a housing allowance, um, which is matched to wherever you live. So, you know, if you live in like New York City, it's like $3,000, but if you live in Idaho, it's probably like $1,200. So, but it pays, it covers all the costs of your utilities for the most part and your housing. And then there's a free health care. So, I think when I worked it out, uh, it's between about $78,000 in total benefits, um, so comparable to kind of like a mid-sized law firm. Um, so you're not going to be like starving, but you're also not going to be making the boat payments probably either. Um, <clears throat> but so those are the benefits, uh, and then obviously that's healthcare for your family, and then they will send you throughout the world a lot of different locations. And really, the main benefit I have had is the legal education. I mean, that's you guys are going to law school, you're going to be lawyers. Um, you want to get a good opportunity to learn how to practice law. And one of the best opportunities I've found is in public service, be it you know, if you're going to go into the DA's office or the Attorney General's office, or you know, in the case of the JAG Corps, they put you in the courtroom right away. Um, within you know, a couple months of showing up, they're going to put you in the courtroom and you're going to prosecute felony cases in front of a panel, actually try jury trials, and you're going to defend possibly jury trials. I've done both. I've done about 30 felony trials and hundreds of misdemeanors. So you get a lot of opportunities right off the bat that you wouldn't get in a lot of opportunities in other situations. Um, international law, when I was in Afghanistan working with like rule of law with uh, the Afghans, so you kind of get cool international law stuff too. Um, and you get to be in the military, that's something you're interested in. So a lot of opportunities. Um, before I go into it, are there any questions at this point? <coughs> Look like you have a question. Oh. For the tuition reimbursement? Yeah. Or so 65, and then does that four years count towards the 10 years of public service? Good question. Yeah, it does actually. So it's not, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, 
that's just what the Army pays you to commit for four years. But if you're part of the federal program to pay off your loans in 10 years, that counts for it as well. Yeah, so you're not really, you can double dip essentially. Yeah. Any other questions right now? Okay. All right, so Army JAG Corps. So there are different military services. There's the Navy, Marines, Air Force. I'm with the Army. Um, they say we're the second largest law firm. So the, the slide used to say largest until some of the Department of Justice, I think, took a look at it. Maybe they were like a JAG reservist, and they're like, no, nah, the Department of Justice has like 10,000 lawyers. You're not the largest law firm. So we had to change it. We didn't want to get sued by the Department of Justice. Um, so now we're the second largest law firm. So about 3,000 active duty and, uh, or a little more than 2,000 active duty and reservist attorneys. So bigger than the biggest private law firm, but uh, <clears throat> offices are not that big. You're not going to have an office of more than maybe like 20 or 30 attorneys max, depending on where you're stationed. And it could be as small as like five or six, depending on where you're located. Um, all right. Oldest law firm in the country is the they trace it back to the founding of the U.S. Army, so we are technically the oldest law firm because they did have JAGs back at the very uh, start of the revolution. So, obviously, long history. Um, all right, so what do you do in the JAG Corps? Uh, basically, a lot of different things. You are a lawyer for commanders. Um, you can be a lawyer for soldiers. So initially you might start off and you might be drafting wills or helping soldiers with divorces. Um, or you could be in the courtroom prosecuting uh, felonies. Or you could be defending felonies. Um, or sometimes you could be like a corporate lawyer for the Army where you're looking at like financial issues. It just kind of depends on what track you want to go. Um, usually everyone does some sort of criminal law though. That's, that's our mission is criminal law. So you're going to probably end up in the courtroom unless you like try to avoid it at all costs, but they're going to probably put you there at some point. All right, so, uh, all right, so people that apply, um, usually they're people that are like dedicated to public service. They want to actually serve their country in one shape or form. Um, obviously, the Army values physical fitness, so if you like to work out, uh, I like to say that I'm a paid athlete, which it's not really true, but they said, you know, like I'm not like going out there and playing football or soccer, but at the end of the day, I get up and I get paid to work out in the morning, which is pretty cool. Um, but really, the Army and the military, just like any law firm, they care about your brain, not how strong you are. So at the end of the day, they want someone that's going to be like smart for commanders and smart for, you know, uh, soldiers to tell them, you know, here's what you can and can't do. So at the end of the day, you are like intellectuals, but it helps out if you like to work out. There is that group camaraderie. Um, obviously, leadership, the army, you know, the military gives you a lot of leadership training and team oriented. So it's not going to be like you're worried about billable hours and like who has which projects. Like it really is what can we all do together to meet the mission. So there's that team atmosphere, which a lot of people like. So it's, you know, if you liked growing up and you played sports and you're part of a team or you're part of a group that was part of a team, it's really great in that aspect. Um, you're not sitting in your office and working on a little project and building hours. You know, obviously everyone has their own projects, but you know, you bounce ideas off people. It's a very collegial um, community atmosphere. <clears throat> all right, qualifications. Um, all right, you must be a lawyer to be in the Army Jack Corps, obviously. <laughs> uh, I'm sure all of you will become lawyers at some point here soon. Um, you've got to be a US citizen. Uh, now, after duty, you have to be under 42 years old. Uh, now, if you're uh, older than 42, the reserves can actually waive that requirement. So the Army reserves, that's where like you actually, you've got your civilian practice, and say you're, you're working for the DA's office, or your own private law firm, but one, one weekend per month and two weeks per year, you go and you're an active duty soldier, essentially. You go and you work on legal issues for the Army. There's some benefits to that. Now, a lot of people that do that actually end up kind of transferring it into the active side because they like it so much. But that's kind of just like dipping your toe in the water and getting a feel for it without actually having to commit full time, you know, 24 7 a day. <clears throat> but this is for the active duty. Um, and you have to graduate from law school, so. So, talk a little bit about the opportunities. Um, continuing legal education. You will never suffer for. Uh, CLE credit your entire time in the Jag Corps. 
Um, I've been to so many trainings, I can't even count. Like, they just keep on sending you to training. Like, they train you to death sometimes, it feels like. I mean, they will send you to training and after training, which is great. I mean, you learn a lot of skills at these trainings. They pay for everything. They'll send you to, you know, all sorts of places. Um, and you learn from very qualified professionals, and you get CLE credit. So whatever state you're admitted to, you won't ever have to worry about going to any private CLEs or taking any additional classes. You'll be covered probably for life with all your CLEs, as long as you're in the Army. <clears throat> um, OK, so the initial phase, say you, you do decide to join and you get admitted. Um, first off, a lot of people ask, like, where do I get stationed at? You know, like, how do I pick that? And the thing is, you submit a list before you sign on the document. And so, and then they'll call you and tell you where you're going before you actually commit, which is good because it would kind of be crazy if you, know, you showed up and then they were like, well, now here's where we're going to send you. Um, but they're, they take into consideration where you want to go and you don't have to join if you don't like what they come back with. So typically, the people that first join get some pretty good locations because they want you to come in and actually join. And so I know for my first location, I was over in Europe. Um, <clears throat> but that's once you're done with your initial training. You do go through like officer training, like JAG training. Um, so for about six weeks, you go and learn how to be a soldier. And that's just like camping in the woods and marching and shooting rifles and just like the basic soldier stuff that you know they put every person through from World War II onwards. Um, so that's fun stuff. And then you you guys get through that, and then you go to Charlottesville, Virginia, for about three months, and that's a really great location. And we have our own JAG school there with professors, and they teach you, you're kind of like, you show up there, and you're like, well, I thought I'm done with law school. Why do I have to go through it again? But you go through, you learn army law and military law. We have our own type of law in the military, which is kind of similar to the civilian law, but it's its own type of law. So you got to go, and you've got to learn that. Um, and so you're in Charlottesville, Virginia, which is not a bad place to be for three months. And then after that, you go to your assignment location. And typically, you're in a location for about two to three years, and then they move you. If you want to stay in, then you know you pick a new location, and they move you to a different location. So these are just our areas of practice. Uh, military justice, like I said, that's the key one. Contract and fiscal law. Some people love that. It's kind of like you know you might be in Afghanistan or Iraq, and the commander might want to build a hospital, so they'll come and they'll try to figure, ask you. How do I get these funds legally? Because this is when they get in trouble, it's when they don't do it correctly. How do I legally get these funds to build a hospital? Boy, and then you have to write a memo, you have to brief them and tell the colonel or the general how to do that. Uh, legal assistance, that's dealing with like family law type of issues. So that's just like if you had your own family law practice, people will come in and ask you about, you know, like divorce or separation, sadly, but you know, that's one aspect of law. And then claims, um, you know, for instance, you might be in a foreign country and, you know, during a training exercise, say they accidentally blow up a house in Germany or something like that. Well, that German's going to want their house paid for. Um, because, and you're going to have to actually, this stuff happens all the time. You know, the military does a lot of firepower. So you have to deal with like, okay, well, how do you pay that out? Um, administrative law, that's kind of like you're the corporate attorney for the army. You know, the, the general comes to you and says, hey, I want to, go uh, meet with the mayor of Orlando, and we're going to have this you know, fundraising event. Can you do it? Can you bring a military band there? Can you, you know, do a flyover with jets? All sorts of stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and then international operational law. So like when I was in Afghanistan, that would be like actually driving out and meeting with the Afghans and trying to help them set up a justice system, which they didn't have before. So stuff that in my mind, at least for the operational and international law, you would never get that experience in any other type of legal environment but the military because they're the only ones that have the um, capacity to go into some of these you know, uh, third world areas where there's a lot of war and conflict and actually set up a legal system. It's part of the commander's mission. Um, but really the core competency is military justice. So, which in a lot of ways is going to be similar to what you're learning in crim law here. You know, assaults, uh, all sorts of things, dealing with felonies drugs, things like that, and you get to prosecute them. Or if you like to be on the defense side, which is pretty fun, you get to go and you defend soldiers that are accused of that. And you really get to hone in your skill of how do I defend or how do I prosecute someone and convict. <clears throat> so that's really what we do a lot of. And then uh, development of legal skills. So I was in a private law firm for about two years before I joined the Army. 
and I probably heard from my partner, and this was a big locker room, and they probably told me maybe once how I was doing. Um, but I never really got kind of like an azimuth check, you know, or any sort of valuation of like, okay, here's what you can do better, here's how you can do this, here's how we're gonna improve your skills on this. I think the public sector, particularly the military, does a great job of mentoring employers and actually saying, okay, we're not just gonna put you in office and have you do document review or like, you know, review a contract. We're gonna teach you how to do something. And if we see like you might falter a little bit in this step, we're gonna give you like some evaluation, not negative, but like here's how we would do this or here's some more training to help you out with that. So they will mentor the heck out of you in the army. They're like, they will not let you fail. They don't let anyone drop because they're constantly, it's all about looking out and developing you and building you up to be that, you know, that partner in the law firm or, you know, in the Army that's going to be like a senior officer if you want to stay there. <clears throat> so really great leadership and mentorship opportunities. And then if you decide to stay in, you've got all sorts of different types of things. Um, you know, for instance, I know there's, you could end up becoming a professor of law at West Point or JAG school or some people end up going in. Um, becoming judges. We have our own judicial system, so they become judges in the military. Or they might end up going and working as an appellate lawyer, so getting to argue before the judges, you know, drafting appellate briefs. So it's not all just you're out in the woods shooting, you're doing a lot of like legal thinking and really developing case law, but on the military side of things. Um, <clears throat> all right, so applying. If you're interested in applying, we've got two separate programs, well, really three. One is gonna be the intern program. So if you're a 2L, um, we have a paid internship program where they put you in a JAG office somewhere in the country for several months. And during that summer, you get to kind of work and see how a JAG office operates and help them out with their legal mission. So great opportunity, particularly if you're really interested in the military, they give you an evaluation that you take with you and that can be part of your application afterwards if you decide you want to join. Um, and then we also have active duty application and both those deadlines are 1 November, so if you're interested, um, I really have to interview you while I'm down here because you need an interview, but you can do the interview this week and then you can go ahead and fill out your application just as long as you submit it by 1 November, you're going to be good. Um, so that's the requirement for that. And then for the, for the active duty, those will be people that are graduating this next year. Um, <clears throat> also, there is a process, and I don't do the interviews for this, but if you're just interested in doing the reserves, which means you know, you're know you kind of a part-time soldier, you have your full-time job you know, in the civilian world, but you're technically, you know, once a month, you're actually in the Army. Um, that's a separate process, but that is opportunity, and there are some benefits with that as well. So you still technically get some of the military benefits, but it's not a full-time commitment. Um, you're a citizen soldier, and you, you know, once a month, and then two weeks per year, you come on, and you do legal work in the military. So that's the summer internship. And then <clears throat> that's uh, again the reserves. So for the reserves, actually, you can be over the age of 42. So if you're a little bit older and you want to still join, you actually can be, I think, well into your 40s or 50s and still get waived in the reserves because they, they need a lot of lawyers in the reserves. Um, to help out. With. There are a lot of soldiers in the reserves as well, so they help out with their mission. Uh, and honestly, a lot of people that I know that have been in the reserves, they end up coming in doing active duty stuff and they decide they want to go active duty because they like it so much. But it's kind of a way to initially get introduced to it if you're not comfortable but, you know, applying for active duty right away. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Financial incentives. All right, that's what everyone wants to know about, right? Uh, so like I talked about, there's a $65,000 loan repayment, and then there's a continuation bonus after your first four years of $60,000. Currently, check when you're applying or when you're in, because you know we don't know if that's always gonna exist, but currently there's a $60,000 additional sign-up bonus after four years. And then the reserves, you decide not to do the active duty, but you just want to do the service. <coughs> they either give you $10,000 just to join, or it's a $30,000, uh, student loan repayment program. But I'll say this, the reserves do go through the whole basic you know, JAG officer training. Um, so they come in as first lieutenants and then they go through the training, which is you know, it's gonna be about four months of training and then they get certified as a JAG officer. Um, and then they become captains shortly thereafter. So 
Everyone's a commission officer when they're in the JAG Corps, and then you make captain shortly after you join. And the world is our workplace, and it, obviously there's a lot of opportunities. You can be stationed anywhere from like Kansas to Georgia to Afghanistan to Korea or Asia, Hawaii, lots of different uh, locations. Um, and obviously the Army's right now the biggest force-wise of all of our sol of all of our military forces. So we have bases throughout the country and throughout the world. So, okay, it's my recruiting spiel. Um, what questions do you guys have about anything? Yes. The 2L internship, is that 2L going to your 3L or is that your 1L going to your 2L? It is going to be your 2L going into your 3L here. Yeah. So if you're 2L right now, you'd be applying for the 2L internship. Yeah. Uh, 1Ls, you don't really, they used to have a 1L internship program, but I think they really geared now towards like 2Ls. So you do the internship and then you're interested in it, they, you know, they convince you to apply on active duty after that. So, yes. Uh, for bar admission, do you, do you have to be admitted to any bar? Or is it like a... Yeah, I mean, you have to be a lawyer, definitely. Like, you have to be admitted to one bar. Okay. Um, I think it's any state or federal district, yeah. So, you take the bar exam, usually before you show up, you'll take the bar exam, and then probably after you take the bar exam, you'll start the next class after that. So say you like take the bar exam in July, you probably start in September or October for that next class. It's kind of like you would with a law firm. Yeah. Any other questions? So you have wings so you guys go airborne too? Jack yeah, airborne. so there are those opportunities. If you really want to do the Army stuff, I mean, you could spend your entire career and never have to do airborne school or ranger school or anything like that. But if you're really into that, you want to go like jump out of airplanes or go, you know, hike around the woods of Florida and Georgia for months on end. <laughs> um, you could do that. It's just you really just have to raise your hand and say, I want to go do that. Um, so I went to airborne school. I thought it'd be interesting to go jump out of airplanes. It was not. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, you can go do all that. Yeah, there's there are a ton of different opportunities from deploying to air war school, air assault school, people that like repel down helicopters, like Black Hawk Down, they, they'll train you to do all that. Or you could just be just <coughs> taking the legal field and like say you want to become military, criminal justice law, you know, focus on like prosecution and defense, um, or both. It just, it really depends on what you plan, like what you want to do. <clears throat> yeah. So, any feedback from people that have been in the military? I would. Uh, just, you know, on your experience, um, active duty. <clears throat> um, well, I, I, I'm here more too, but I actually had fun. I was like, I don't know what happened with yours. But, uh, like, um, I hit the airplane on the way up. Oh, yeah. you jumped out wrong. That's yeah, that's true. <laughs> 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 uh, so you're active duty National Guard, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Been a positive experience for you? Um, for the most part, I mean, I, I mean, obviously with anything, there's like good days and bad days. But I mean, for the most part, I can't like pinpoint anything that was like, oh my god, this sucks so bad. So, you know, it's, it's the military is a positive thing. I mean, for me at least, it has been. You know, so I don't have any complaints. Yeah, yeah, it gives you a lot of positives. There are obviously like a lot. You know, waking up sometimes at four or five in the morning is not fun. Um, yeah. but. You know, there's sacrifices, but overall, um, it's really, it, gives, it sculpts you and kind of defines you in a lot of ways as a lawyer. So it's a challenge, but it's a really interesting challenge if you're up for it. Um, and it's, like I said, you know, it's also, it's a good job to have when you're first out of law school to learn how to practice law. Yeah. One question. How selective are you, uh, Jack? So if I do the internship, pass the bar, am I guaranteed a slot in Jack or? I'm not guaranteed, but if you do the internship, uh, you've got a pretty good shot um, because you're showing like you're interested in it. So I know a lot of people that are active duty right now that did the internship, but there are a lot of people like myself that never did the internship and just called up the JAG office one day and decided to join. Them. So uh, it's competitive. It used to be about like a eight to nine percent select rate about like four or five years ago. Yeah, and now. Um, I think like the current legal market, they're now more like going to like the 30% select rate of applicants. 
But so it used to be, it just depends on like the legal market. It used to be like 70% when it was a really tight market, and now that the market's a little bit opening up, uh, they're not quite as selective. Yeah. So. Any other questions? Yes. How about when you're phasing out of your conversion with your commission? getting ready to get back to stability point, is that difficult? Are you more hireable because you're- I don't know, come ask me in a couple years. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it depends, really. It's, uh, from what I understand, a lot of people end up in U.S. attorney's offices, they go directly from the JAG board to U.S. attorney's offices. Because it's, like for some reason, a lot of U.S. attorney's offices have like a large group of JAG alumni, and so I think it's pretty like, they hire a lot from the people that are getting out of the JAG board. I know that which is great because it's like almost impossible to go and get a job in the U.S. Attorney's Office. So I think for that, it'd be great. Um, I don't know of a lot of people, like I don't know, to be honest, a lot of people stay in because they like it. Um, and I haven't met a lot of people that have left. And I've been in for six years. So <clears throat> I think that most people I've met that have left have gone and done something with like the Department of Justice. And it seems like it's worked out pretty well for them. Yeah, so I think it, I've never heard that it hurts you in any way. I think it only helps you out. So, any other questions? All right, well, if you want to talk to me more, um, I've got a sign-in sheet for interviews. Also, if you just want to come and talk to me more about the process, let me know. You can sign up uh, for tomorrow. You can just chat about it. Or you can just give me your email. Uh, I'm not committing to anything. Honestly, I, uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be in the Army. I'm just simply you know, coming down and trying to inform people. And I know that you know, this is you know, one of the law schools on the Army's list, so people like know about it. So, you know, if you just want to know about it, you want me to send you information or get my contact info, ask me any questions, just give me your email. I'm happy to talk to you about it, right? So, thank you guys for spending your afternoon.